next up, instead of a video, we'll just go right to the next talk. So I'm sorry if I get your name wrong, but uh, we have Dr. Pablo Alvera Valdivia y Alva. I'm sorry, is that correct? Or? Yes. Okay, so I'm really sorry. Uh, uh, Dr. Pablo is a research scientist in the Center of Environmental Sensing and Modeling at the Singapore MIT Alliance for Research and Technology and a research affiliate in the Department of Mechanical Engineering at MIT. He has received his BS, MS and PhD degrees at, in Mechanical Engineering at MIT. His research interests include design, robotics, biomimetics and the modeling of biological fluids and mechanical phenomena. So I'll hand, off, hand it off to you. Thank you. Yeah, sorry, I have a long name. So I like robots, and I'll be talking about making better robots. Why, why making better robots? Well, over the last 20 years or so, robot uh, software has evolved tremendously. AI, computing, you name it. However, robot hardware, or the bodies that we use for robots, have essentially stayed the same. We use the same uh, mechanical components, pulleys, linkages, etc. And this is a perfect example. This is a, a, an arm, a robotic arm which is used in manufacturing, medicine, uh, etc. And I'm showing this design, which is my design, because I feel this, uh, it exemplifies the way traditional robots look. They're essentially uh, very complex assemblies of, of stiff uh, components. Now, these robots do well in the laboratory or in clean human environments, but when we take them to real environments, they fail. So we need to worry about protecting them, adding skins, seals, etc., which make them even more complex. And we build robots uh, so they can go to environments that are either too far or too dangerous for us humans to go, right? So when they get there, uh, we would like them to, to do well and survive. Otherwise, we have a problem. And in, in this case, we have a problem. We need better uh, embodiments. Now, nature provides us many examples of good uh, designs to survive and do well in, in, in real environments. And robots that mimic uh, biology and nature uh, are very, uh, is a very exciting field. But this only stresses the need to, to, to build better bodies for robots. So what to do? What, what I propose in my work is to exploit the vibrations of flexible bodies. Vibrations uh, uh, show prefer, preferred uh, shapes, which are called uh, modes, which depend on the materials, the geometry, the forces, etc. So what, what do I mean by this? Say we want to build a robotic uh, fish. Right? If we take the traditional approach to robotic, we end up with a design that looks like the one on the left, where we have a complex assembly with several links. Each, each link is going to be actuated by a motor, gears, pulleys, etc. Instead of doing that, if we can design a flexible body with the right material combinations such that the, the vibrations, the natural vibrations, match closely the motions that we want to achieve, we, we end up with a design that is a lot simpler and a lot more robust. So how do we do this for robots? Say we're interested in mimicking the motions of this creature to do well in a particular real environment. So the first thing we need to do is understand the motions that interest us. Whether it is the body or, or some appendage motion, we need to have mathematical models that describe these motions. When we have, once, once we have these models, we need to worry about the physics. We need to understand the physics of, of, of what makes this flexible body vibrate. So we need to have models that relate the vibrations of this body to the geometry, the materials of this body, the forces that we apply to this body, and its interactions with the environment. After we have this, it's also useful to have an idea of the constraints of the problem. And the constraints usually uh, move around uh, the, the geometry of, of the bodies and the materials that we use. To give you an example, for underwater applications, we usually want to be neutrally buoyant, right? So we, we prefer to end up with material combinations that are not heavier or much lighter than water. So knowing this, we can figure out the right material combinations to make these flexible bodies uh, uh, vibrate with shapes uh, that resemble as close as possible the, the shapes that we want to achieve in the robot. Now, if we go back to the example of the fish, if, if we already define the geometry of a fish, when we solve for the material distributions, we get these types of functions. These functions essentially are telling us how elastic and how viscous the, the, the flexible body should be at each position along its length. And to, uh, and to fabricate this, we, we use casting techniques. We cast flexible bodies using different uh, materials along, along the length of the robot. And the, the mechanisms that, that actuate these robots are encapsulated inside these flexible bodies. And they're protected. They're very robust and very simple. Now, these robots actually perform uh, very well. I'm showing two examples here. On the left, uh, the fish that I used to, to, to explain the process, and on the right, a stingray. They move very naturally, and they perform a lot better than traditional robots. And I, I should say this is not only limited to underwater locomotion. We've built several robots using this idea, including walking robots, such as the salamander here, and also uh, uh, fingers for, uh, for a robotic gripper. 
Now, these robots are very useful for engineering applications, but they also serve science well, since we can make them mimic emotions of natural creatures. We can use them as experimental tools to understand what makes these natural creatures perform so well in their environment. Right? And we're already doing this in the case of the stingrays. We use these robots to understand uh, how stingrays control the hydrodynamics around them to, to move and maneuver well. This figure shows the wake that a stingray left leaves uh, as it moves forward. These types of studies are only possible uh, using these types of devices, which I believe are better robots. Thank you.